In DaVinci Resolve 18, the addition of new effects and updates to existing tools has expanded grading functionality more than ever. The Object Mask is a groundbreaking tracking tool that intuitively detects and tracks objects within a shot. To activate it, open the Magic Mask palette and click the Object Mask button. Drag in the viewer to make an initial selection and enable the mask overlay to review and fine-tune the result. When you're satisfied, track the shot using the transport controls in the palette. Once keyed, objects can be individually graded to produce the optimal look for your scene. The object mask produces very impressive results, even upon initial selection. However, it also features helpful additive and subtractive strokes to help with more challenging tracks. This makes it possible to select visually complex objects and follow them, even as they are obscured by other elements in the scene or if they leave the frame. Going beyond simple chroma and luma keying, the object mask makes precise selections even when there are strong shadows or dramatic fluctuations in light. The palette's parameters allow you to control the complexity of the mat, with the better quality suited for selections with very fine detail, like fur or hair. The object mask has been tested on thousands of objects and has a recognition rate unlike any other tool in the industry. This includes people, animals, vehicles, facial features, and countless other elements. Use the object mask to emphasize products and commercials, perform sky replacements, or any number of creative applications that even we haven't thought of yet. In the Resolve Effects panel, the new Depth Map effect generates a 3D math key that will allow you to grade the foreground of a shot separately from the background, or vice versa. After adding the Depth Map tool to your node pipeline, use the comprehensive parameters in the OpenFX palette to determine the depth of the mat, to isolate a range, and finesse the mat for a smooth result. Once the depth has been successfully mapped, connect the output key of the Depth Map node to any downstream corrector node to isolate grades or effects. Use this workflow to bring greater attention to action in the foreground, to help interview subjects stand out, to add atmosphere to a scene, or even to mimic a shallow depth of field with the help of a blur tool. The new surface tracker can be used to apply images or effects to elements with a moving surface. In particular, it's designed to work with textured surfaces that fold or change perspective in dramatic ways, like a t-shirt, a banner, or the side of a face. After dragging the surface tracker effect into your node pipeline, click on the viewer to define the bounds of the area you wish to track. Then click the Mesh button to review the default grid that's generated based on your area selection. The points and their connection lines represent the trackable features of the texture. They can be increased and refined in the Mesh options. Run the track and then adjust parameters to change the motion range or mesh rigidity. You can then drag and drop an image into the node pipeline, connect it to the surface tracker node, and use the settings to adjust its size and placement on the tracked surface. You can seamlessly blend your tracked image to the environment with the help of standard corrector nodes and existing effects like Film Grain and Patch Replacer. And with a slightly different workflow, you can also apply effects to the warped surface by first generating a stabilized output of the area and reapplying it to the surface tracker. The surface tracker offers robust pattern recognition and warps in response to motion in the tracked surface, but it remains highly customizable. You can change mesh bounds, introduce holes, or design your own track pattern by warping a default mesh to match the folds of a material. You can also combine the surface tracker with power windows to isolate the end result to specific regions of the tracked area. The beauty effect now features an ultra beauty mode that gives you advanced control over a subject when performing corrective beauty work. Developed with feedback from professional colorists, this tool makes it possible to address general imperfections by smoothing skin and then recovering detail to produce a result that is natural and complementary to the subject. This approach results in some interesting application potential when it comes to smoothing any rough surface, from damaged walls and roads to distracting reflections or even video compression artifacts like banding and aliasing. The fast noise effect generates randomized noise data that can be used to replicate different types of atmosphere or particle-like effects. Its many parameters give you advanced control over the final appearance of the noise, 
but you can also use the preset menu at the top to get a quick start on effects like mist and smoke, which you can then track to the motion of your shot using the effects tracker. Other presets act as displacement maps that can warp your image to imitate the motion of water or heat haze. The edge detect effect has been reworked to include new gamma and filter controls, as well as a new half edge option that allows you to keep only the light or dark side of an edge. Use this tool to sharpen soft clips or inversely to create a glow around a subject. The despill effect helps clean up subjects affected by unwanted color spills. It works with green, blue, and even red chroma screens. Combine it with a magic mask to remove natural color cast from environments with dominant hues. The Transform plugin now supports an additional RGB input, allowing you to position and composite one image over another within a single clip. In the Chromatic Aberration Removal plugin, a green-purple slider has been added to help counteract every possible variation of chromatic lens aberration. In the Lens Reflections effect, Bokeh has been added as a preset, allowing you to imitate this distinct lens aesthetic on out-of-focus lens reflections generated from highlights and light sources. And when working with the Film Grain plugin, you now have the option to animate it with every refresh, meaning that instead of seeing static grain, you will now have animated grain, giving you a clearer representation of your final look as you are grading. Other system improvements give you the option to render individual clips with timeline effects. There's now support for 10-bit viewers on Windows and Linux and the option to stream video outputs to remote monitors when collaborating with others. This covers just some of the new features in DaVinci Resolve 18's color page. Thank you for watching. That's really great. I mean, some of our AI technology now is really amazing. So next up, let's check out what's new in editing. DaVinci Resolve 18 has multiple improvements for editors and VFX artists. The Refresh Project Manager now has dedicated buttons for easier import and export of DaVinci Resolve project files along with new options for copying projects between local, network, and cloud-based project libraries. And now you can instantly set customized project settings to be the default for all new projects using the option in the Project Settings window. A new User Preference option allows you to automatically generate keywords when importing media that contains macOS Finder tags, which are then instantly displayed within the Keyword Smart Bins. The new Blackmagic Proxy Generator app automatically creates proxy files for media placed in a specific watch folder. These proxy files are then automatically linked when the full res camera files are imported into a project. This automatic linking also happens if the proxies are created once the media has been imported. It's also now easier to identify which clips in your project are using proxy files. A new proxy icon is displayed next to the clip name or on the clip thumbnail in the media pool. The same icon can also be seen for any clips using proxy media in the timeline and in the color page. If generating proxy files from Resolve, you can now choose where the proxies will be stored from new options in the Media Storage Preferences. You can use the proxy subfolders in the media file locations as the Proxy Generator app does, the location set in the Project Settings, or have Resolve ask where the proxies should be stored each time you choose to generate them. A new Proxy Handling submenu option allows you to specify how your proxy files are used. Preferred proxies will use available proxy media for all clips. If no proxies are available, the original media file is used. Prefer camera originals will ignore any proxies and use the original media file. But if the original file isn't available and a proxy file is, then the proxy will be used. These options are particularly useful when working remotely using the new cloud collaboration features, as they enable you to work with available files as they are being synced. Alternatively, you can choose to disable all proxies when grading or working on visual effects, with a dedicated menu for these options being available in the cut page. DaVinci Resolve 18 has multiple improvements for subtitling, 
with extended support for importing TTML and XML files, and subtitles embedded in XMF and IMF files. In the timeline, each subtitle track can now contain multiple simultaneous captions. Simply right-click the subtitle track in the timeline to add a new region or rename an existing region. Each region can have its own formatting and can contain additional overlapping captions, ideal for indicating different speakers or multiple simultaneous sounds on complex soundtracks. That wouldn't be possible. Well, it's possible, Dr. Kaminsky, because it's happening. I need you to tell me everything you know about the Sinks. For larger multicam projects, a new 5x5 layout allows you to see up to 25 different angles at the same time. Shape, iris and white transitions now have a new option for quickly reversing the direction of those transitions. You can now navigate directly to keyframes outside the limits of trimmed timeline clips, either using the next and previous keyframe controls in the inspector, or by using keyboard shortcuts, ideal for refining animations beyond a clip's duration in the timeline. Improvements to the way fusion elements are now processed have resulted in huge increases to real-time performance for many of the fusion templates in the edit page. In DaVinci Resolve 18, many of the included templates can now play back in real time without the need to enable the render cache. The updated live preview feature for text clips and fusion templates also allows for the instant adjustment of colors. Significant performance changes have been introduced to Fusion's Paint tool, making it a faster GPU accelerated tool with higher quality results and increased rendering speeds, making this an all round more productive tool. Fusion's Merge tool now includes additional blend modes to help create various effects and looks. This support has been extended to imported PSD files, preserving any blending operations that may have been used in the original source file. Five new merge operations have also been included. Conjoint and disjoint make it easier to combine alpha channels. Whilst mask and stencil allow you to easily merge and combine mats. DaVinci Resolve 18 now also supports direct uploading to supported social media accounts as part of the Deliver page settings. And the new Quick Export window features improved layouts for easier access to multiple export presets. <laughs>